I said, what are your thoughts about that game? And he said, it was all bad. It was bad if we lost, but I felt bad for them because that was their third straight loss in Big 12 play. It'll be Baylor ranked number nine in their road grays, number 14 K-State in the home whites. Your officials Keith Kimball, James Breeding, Brett Smith were underway and the Bears control the opening tip. K-State, excellent man-to-man -man team. They will do a lot of switching. And Baylor, as you know, Rich, they are going to shoot a lot of threes. Yeah, strength on strength tonight. The best three-point shooting team in the Big 12 is Baylor. The best at defending the three, Kansas State. Instead, Baylor goes inside and Flo Thamba, who had his best game in the Big 12 against Kansas State, has the first two. Nice penetration there by L.J. Cryer. Kansas State's lineup, Noel, Johnson, Carter, they've all started every game and a good start by Keontae Johnson. That play looks familiar. They got Kansas on that. Wait in the win here. Spin out lob. Baylor's starting five, Flo Thamba, Keontae George, Jalen Bridges. They've started all 27 games for Scott Drew. Here's the freshman Cam Carter, number five in white. Desi Sills, 13 in white, making just his second start of the season for Jerome Tang. Why did he put him in the lineup? I think they had to shake things up after struggling uh, the last couple weeks. He started on Saturday. Nice block. Jalen Bridges doing it on the defensive end on, and in rebounding for Baylor. And there is Scott Drew, 52 years young. Only Jim Beheim, Tom Izzo, Mike Bray, and Leonard Hamilton have a longer tenure at their major conference school than Scott Drew. Here's Carter. In and out on the three. And Thamba grabs the rebound. These three Baylor guards, everything or almost everything comes off the dribble. Keontae George off the mark on his first shot. He had 22 the first time these teams met in Waco. And Scott Drew's best friend and brother for life, but now a foe on the opposite sideline. And that's Jerome Tang, 19 years as his right-hand man in Waco, now running the show in Manhattan. And certainly one of the finalists for National Coach of the Year, Frank. Well, he's on the, the uh, Naismith watch list, one of 15. Three from the Big 12, T.J. Otzelberger, Rodney Terry, and Jerome Tang. Here's the lob from Noel to Keontae Johnson. Two in a row. Keontae has had a fabulous return to college basketball this year. Flagler. Excellent ball movement as usual, and it's paid off by L.J. Cryer, the first triple of the night. L.J. is having a fabulous year behind the arc, shooting 43% from deep. And 48% in Big 12 play, Frank. Four times in the last eight games, L.J. Cryer's gone for 20 or more. Inside, Carter. Nice feed from the big man, Tomlin. Scott Drew's not, not going to like this start. They have really struggled on the defensive end this year. Offensively, the analytics say they're the second best offensive team efficiency-wise in the nation. But this is their worst defense, Rich, since 2009. Cryer, nice feed. Bridges has an and one opportunity. Both of these teams early in the game have gotten the ball into the paint and made the defense pay. First, the alley-oop on one end by the Wildcats. Take a look right here. Marquise Noel finds Johnson, and then uh, this was just which guy is open. Cryer does a great job of finding Bridges. Brett, myself, LJ Cryer credited with a two-point shot, so it's a tie ball game that is untied by Jalen Bridges. The West Virginia transfer has a three-point play, and Baylor's up by one. Coming up on three minutes gone by. Little zone now. Scott Drew told us today he would throw some change-ups at the Wildcats, so they are in zone. You remember, Rich, for a long time they played a great 1-1-3 zone. Seven to shoot. Here's Sills, left-handed three. Looked good off his hand, but a long rebound to Flagler. Oh! Bridges and never looked up. Yeah, Keontae George threw it right out of bounds. Right. No one even touched it. Here's the Cardinal sin. You always, always keep your eyes on the ball. No matter where you are in the 
court, you're always running to look for the ball. Watch right here. Bridges is running, not looking at the ball. And how does he know if he's not open or not? There you see that 1-1-3 one, one, now. It looks like a 1-3-1, one, one, but it'll morph into essentially a 2-3. Tomlin, open, if only for a second, and has a chance at a three-point play. This is a conundrum right now for Scott Drew because he's gone man, hasn't worked. He's gone zone, hasn't worked. Watch how easy this is. They were looking lob, and uh, Tomlin was supposed to set a back screen lob, but he wound up being wide open in, inside that restricted arc, and it was a good find. Naquan Tomlin had nine points, eight rebounds in Waco in that overtime win, 97-95. The final score, Baylor knows all too well. If K-State starts clicking on offense, they could be as deadly as anybody. 2-2-1 Two -two pressure now. This will melt the shot clock. The freshman Carter, a tough cover on number 10 in gray, Adam Flagler. Here's Bridges inside. And a tough two off the window and no whistle. But Jalen Bridges has an early five. Let's see if the Bears can tighten up that zone. When they used zone in the past, they were a very tall, long team, especially on the back line. Deep three, Noel. And believe me, if you haven't seen Marquise Noel play, that's right in his wheelhouse. We've got a stoppage of play, and when we come back, a tradition a dozen years in the making, a dozen, as in a dozen donuts, happens for the rest of their coaching career. They will always be brothers. Absolutely. 19 years. Scott Drew had to recruit Jerome Tang to take the assistant coaching job. He was the head coach at Heritage Christian in Houston, and it took a while. He decided to join his staff, and they made great history together. Flagler, his shot off the mark, the rebound is Sills. As good as it, uh, Flagler is, that's a shot I can live with, a fadeaway jumper. Although he is masterful. At He's really good shots. at it. I think at times they need to get to the basket and drive it and mix up the threes and the drives. And obviously this is arguably the best backcourt in the country or certainly in the top two or three. Noel. Blocked by Bridges, one of the tops in the conference in blocks per game. Jalen Bridges has given Scott Drew what I think Kevin McCullough has given Bill Self, and that is outstanding grit, toughness, hustle plays. You see it right there. And Jalen Bridges, who got, got off to it, we saw a slow start to the season, especially shooting, has really become a great role player for this Bear team. And how about Marquise Noel? Talk about jumping out of the gym. He jumped out of his Nikes. He'll lace them up with the score tied nine apiece and 4.8 on the shot clock for the Cats. Johnson looking for the inbounds. Oh, well, he's got to go. Let's see if Marquise knows it. Nobody guards him from the power cat. And it's off the mark, but Tomlin with the offensive rebound. Now they go inside. Johnson. Jonathan Chamochachua altered the shot. Sills, tough two. No, bridges the rebound. Good possession defensively. That, that showed some toughness from the Bears. Some point blank opportunities, well defended. Here's Keontae George, rises up. Can't knock it down, in and out. And Sills wants to run. That's something that Jerome Tang told his team today at practice. We want to play as fast as we can. And that's what Desi does. He's outstanding. In the open court, the former Arkansas Razorback who started most of an Elite Eight run last year, a great season at Arkansas State. We talked about the great story that is Keontae Johnson. Now he's sharing the floor with another great story in Jonathan Chamuchacho. No question. Battle back to an incredible knee injury. With five on the shot clock. Flagler, no. Tomlin, a rebound between two bears. And we're seeing some high energy play between these rivals. Yeah, but Naquan needs to give it up quicker to one of those guards. And there's a bucket by David Gasson, who was starting, now coming off the bench, provides some offense. 
A 13-9 Kansas lead. Kansas State. John Wachachua double teamed in the post, and Brett Smith says a foul is going to be coming on the Wildcats. Coming up at 9 Eastern on ESPN, we'll take you to East Lansing. Some Big Ten basketball as number 17 Indiana gets set to take on the Michigan State Spartans. Last time these two teams met, the Hoosiers took down Michigan State 82-69 back on January 10th, 22nd, and they were led by a potential player of the year candidate, Trace Jackson Davis, 31 points in that game. I think the most impressive individual performance I've seen this season was watching Trace Jackson Davis win in Champaign against the Illini was unguardable that night Right up there national player of the year with Edie Jalen Wilson drew Timmy It's a great year for the Hoosiers Somebody's open five on the shot clock John Wachachua off the window Yeah, what happened was Cryer in the pick-and-roll drew two defenders and all he needed to do was find the open man and Cha Chama Chachua open inside every day John because he brings it every day Playing so in his sixth game back doesn't score a lot yet But has been grabbing the rebounds like we're used to seeing and he's a great talker on defense He is the quarterback of the defense Johnson working on the smaller flag or spins baseline and Chama Chachua grabs the rebound with that, two hands. That's a similar turnaround jumper to the shot that Flagler took. I think Keontae can do, do better than that. Now Langston Love getting some increased playing time from Scott Drew lately. He slips, no whistle. Keith Kimball says, Wildcats basketball. Langston Love, another of those guys that missed all last season. He tore his ACL in a scrimmage against Texas A&M. Surgery was in November, and I think Rich we've watched this season unfold in January He started to get more and more time This was a young man that was a top 50 recruit and I was going to be a very good guard for Baylor another one of the long line of Terrific backcourt players Scott Drew's Bears licking their wounds from their first stop in Kansas That was in Lawrence where they had a lead as big as 17 at one point and ended up losing by double digits at Fog Allen Fieldhouse Good job of cutting off Sills to that left hand by Cryer. Can't leave Masood alone. Yep. Sills with the shot clock running down. And it's tracked down by LJ Cryer. Good defense. He did not let Desi get to that left hand where he's lethal. Deep three. Flagler. And what a follow by Chama Chachua, but he comes up empty. Masood open. Automatic. You can't spell swish without ish. Prior inside the three point line. Baylor 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. That one blocked, out of bounds. And we've got a foul on Baylor. It's Masood. Two th it's those downhill drives from Sills, Johnson, and Noel. And normally against Baylor, you'd say that's advantage Baylor because they're usually shooting and making threes. So you're trading twos for threes, except for tonight, Baylor's 0 for 4 from beyond the arc so far. Hassan misses the first of two free throws. There's our number one in conference play, offensive efficiency, number 10 in defensive efficiency. And Hassan 0 for 2. Caleb Lohner on the floor grabs the rebound for the Bears. Great matchup here between two first team all Big 12 types. Noel guarding Flagler. Lothamba back on the floor. Flagler to the hole. Tough bounce pass. Picked up by Langston Love and a tough two from the freshman. And I think Langston was trying to bank that and it slipped out of his hand, but uh, able to drop it in. Let's see if Baylor stays in zone. They're going man. 
Now Noel's got a mismatch with the big man Loner on him. Out to Carter. Two strong weak side rebound to Keontae George, the fabulous freshman, averaging 17 a game in Big 12 play. And I think I think what Baylor's got to do is make the defense work for 50 feet across the floor. Not keep it on one side. That's way off. Didn't even touch the rim, yeah. and Noel has it. Let's see what the Cats can do in transition. Marquise Noel scoreless, but has three dimes already. Gasson, unforced error. Tomorrow's college basketball doubleheader starts in Gainesville. Oscar Shibwe and the Kentucky Wildcats look to keep their momentum going against UF. Then at 7 Eastern, Armando Baycott and North Carolina take on Notre Dame in South Bend after that. As of now, Joe Lenardi says the Wildcats are in and the Tar Heels are out. 0-9 against quad one team, so they need a miracle, really, or winning the ACC tournament. It's incredible how rich I grew up and then started my coaching career when the ACC and the Big East were the two best leagues in college basketball and it's just so sad to see right now yeah the, the net ranking of the average ACC team right now is 110 think about that mid-major an open look Masood and a big two-hand rebound by Caleb Lohner now see, I think Bear, the bear should push it, son. George got it back, almost turned it over. Had six turnovers against Kansas on Saturday. That shot is short. Johnson pulls his way to the basket. That is an, a perfect example of what we've talked about all year. In this league, you better be physical on offense. And Keontae Johnson and Jalen Wilson do that as well as anybody in this league. There wasn't a foul. There wasn't a defensive breakdown. It was just Keontae Johnson pulling his way to the basket. Johnson had 24 points and nine boards when these teams first met in Waco. He's got six tonight. Five on the shot clock for Baylor. And another turnover for the Bears. Here, here's what we talk about in this league the best in the country You know Oklahoma right now is the tenth. I think I think they're tenth uh, They beat the number two team in the country Alabama by 24 I, It's not the best league ever. Okay, I've been in some good leagues the Big Ten and 88 89 with 27 NBA players some years in the Big East I've never seen a league with the balance from 1 to 10 so good Keontae Johnson's been so good that's his fourth bucket of the game, nine for Johnson, and the lead is 21-13 for 14th-ranked K-State, their largest of the night. What excites me for Keontae is we all know about the heart issue, but teams are, NBA teams are starting to take a hard look at this young man. And we came in talking about the Baylor offense. How about K-State's offense? Eight assists on nine made field goals How about for the Cats. Assists? And there's Cam Carter. And that's 9 nothing in fast break points for the Kansas State Wildcats. Another timeout called. Keontae Johnson loves it. Ema in man happiness right now. And, and they look a step slow. Look at the gray jerseys. Those gray jerseys are not back. They did not build their transition defense. And right here, Keontae Johnson, excellent find. And honestly, you go on the road in this league and you can look very average. And right now, Baylor is playing very average. And they are the number nine team in the country. Joel Arley has them as a two seed in the NCAA tournament. Right now, they've taken an early gut punch on the road against the Wildcats. Cryer for three. And that's the first three-pointer of the game for the best three-point team shooting in the conference. Even that drive by Jalen Bridges, we credited him with how tough he's played lately. He babied that shot up. We showed you what Keontae Johnson when he goes, goes to, does when he goes to the rim. You must play physically on those drives. Bebe Giola misses from close range. And Scott Drew exhorting his troops to push the ball up the floor. Looking for, they had John underneath. 
Didn't see him. George, tough angle, drew the foul. Listen, we know how good a shooting team Baylor is. That's been proven. But you have to mix up that three-point line with strong drives to the rim. And Keontae George certainly capable of that. George had 22 the first time these teams met. Had 20 at Kansas this past Saturday. And if there's one thing that Scott Drew is looking for from his fabulous freshman is a little more consistency. Yeah, I think overall he's had a fabulous year. He and Grady Ticker are the two best freshmen in this league. I think Scott Drew is more than pleased with the year this young man's had. You know, Rich, he put two feet in their circle. He didn't act like he was only doing bail or a favor showing up for a year. What's this guy? I really like the way Keontae George has, you know, taken, taken the beat of college player to heart. 11 times he's been over 20 points in a game. Three ball. And that's oh, cute. That's why he's only going to be here a year. He's got a gift for scoring. I think what Scott told us today, he'd like to see more consistency on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. Here he, he is go. guarding a fellow freshman, Cam Carter, and he forces the turnover. Baylor in the midst of an 8-0 run. Let's watch this drive. Watch the kick. Watch how smooth this stroke is. And then on the other end, he gives you a little ball pressure right there. Forces Carter to lose it out of bounds. Flagler hasn't found the range yet. But the long rebound goes to L.J. Cryer. Inside, John Wachachua, no good. And see, John's got to take that strong. That's another example of what we talked about. Why are you double pumping when you're 6'9", 250? And built like a brick wall. That ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Baylor basketball. We're seeing the energy from everyday John. No question. The yep. explosiveness is still yet to come. Yeah, I think so. But I think that's one where you just take it right through to defense. Listen, we know it's a miracle he's back on the court, and everybody loves to see it. But he also has to get himself ready for March. A chance to tie with a bucket or take the lead with a three for Baylor. Number nine and number 14. Good look. Here's George. Baylor's on top. Yep. That's what we call that short roll. K.J. Adams at Kansas so good at it. And John has always been good at that. Eleven times Keontae George has scored 20 or more points. That's the most ever by a Baylor freshman. He's off to a good start in this. Instead of running the defender over, kicks it out to Keontae George. Beautifully done. And that's almost like a quarterback in football picking up a blitz and hitting a hot receiver. Baylor back on top by one in the midst of an 11-0 run. Keontae George has the last eight for the Bears. Here's Carter. Cam Carter with his second bucket of the game. And that's, that's the consistency defensively. Make that, that six for Carter. That time, Keontae's defense was paper mache. Remember that back in elementary oh, yeah. school? Pryor had it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Baylor basketball. Jerome Tang leading his pace to Burt Smith. And we talked about the superlatives of these two point guards. Adam Flagler and Marquise Noel both have yet to score, but that Big. is something that Jonathan Chamochachua has added to his game. Well, that's that short roll again. This time, instead of finding somebody, he said it found himself because he has worked on that. Carter, no. Chamochachua, the rebound. Stolen by Noel. Carter. And it goes over the backboard. John got rid of that ball so quickly, and 
We've seen Noel do that a few times this year. Sneaky. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college. It's dream guy, just like Scott Drew was yesterday yeah. at Varsity Donuts. We, when we were coming here when Brent Musburger was with us yeah. in the Big 12, Varsity Donuts had a Brent Musburger donut. Oh, yeah. And you can bet it was good. <laughs> so say our friends in the desert. Well, in this one, top 15 matchup, already six lead changes and four ties between number nine, Baylor, number 14, Kansas State. Little zone by the Wildcats, changing things up. Let's see if they stay in it. Taking a lot of time. Five to shoot. Too much. Here's a deep three by George. Off the mark, Tom win the rebound. Here comes Marquise Noel, still scoreless. Averaging 20 a game in Big 12 play. Rich, keep your eye on everyday John and watch how active a talker he is. He's the quarterback of that defense. Johnson off the mark, another rebound for Chumwa the, the reason big guys are really good at that is because they're on the back line and they see the other four teammates. Here's Cryer, catch and release. They've made their last five threes, Fran. Yeah. And they've all been good rhythm threes, too, off a good ball movement. I thought early they forced some. Check that. They've made five of their last six, but I still think Scott Drew will take that number. Tomlin. Gasson the offensive rebound. And David Gasson will go to the line. David, David Gasson, the transfer from Virginia Tech. He missed a, a bunch of January. Set this team back a little bit. They went smaller, actually, and they were actually, in some ways, a more dangerous team. But now with Gasson back, gives them more depth on that front line, and that's going to help them as they head into March. Gasson, just a 52% free throw shooter, and he's 0 for 3 tonight. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Hoops fans. Our featured game Wednesday, March 1st. Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel and these number 14 Wildcats host Oklahoma at 8 Eastern. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. And that's a revenge game for K-State. They lost to Oklahoma last year. Yes, they did. Around. And, and, and uh, right before they played Iowa State last weekend, and Jerome Tang was not happy with the effort and intensity. But, Rich... I'm just telling you, it's it's mid-February. You know what we say in basketball? February is the shortest month in the calendar. It's the longest month in the basketball season because these guys are ready for March. That's got to be a foul. Good catch by Chama Chachua, and he gets fouled. Well, you talk about revenge games. Baylor, counting tonight, has four games left in the regular season, Fran. Three of those, they have an opportunity to avenge losses from earlier in the year starting tonight. Yeah, but I will tell you as a coach, you might be able to use that on occasion motivationally, but for the most part, you're having amnesia, Rich, from the previous game or the previous time you played somebody, you just want to play well. Everybody, John, this is the first free throw. Chamochachua goes one for two. How about Baylor only committing three team fouls so far? Here's Noel. Float game. And he doesn't get the shooter's touch, and two players are down. Here's Cryer. Calls his own number and doubles up another triple. Yep. Keontae's got to know that Cryer's got such a quick release. He was in the vicinity, but really couldn't challenge that shot. He had four threes at TCU. He had eight against West Virginia. And he's got three tonight already. But an answer from Naquan Tomlin. One minute to go in the half. And George turns it over. Young man, you got to catch that ball with two hands. Just a young player's mistake right there. We used to test our players, and we'd show them that both hands end up at the same weight. So just put both hands out there. You'll have a better chance of catching that pass. 
coming in. He had 32 assists, but 40 turnovers yep. in Big 12 play. Noel, bounce pass. Tomlin, back to back buckets. Oh, I see what they're doing. Good. Now, what Baylor did is they went the game, the shot clock, the game clock was running. The shot clock does not start in the first half until the ball is touched. They're still going to give Kansas State a little bit of time, but less than they would have. About a 10 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Flagler controls near midcourt. Five to shoot. Flagler does. In and out. Half time now. And it's nearly stolen away by Keontae George. Instead, with eight seconds to go in the half, it'll be last shot time for the Wildcats. Now, do you want to give a foul here? I'm not crazy about that, especially if it's Flagler or George. Those fouls could be valuable late in the game. They've got three they can give here, but I would not do it with two of my top line guys. Let's see. Now Ish Masood on the floor for Jerome Tang, a three-point sniper. 25 and white. Noel's got it. And draws the foul on Flagler, his second. And see, that's, I, I don't know, I don't think he did that on purpose, Adam. To your point, Fran, just the fourth Baylor team foul. I think there are a lot of coaches that think this is a great idea in the first half. The reason I don't love it is because I do it if I sub a couple guys who we don't care about getting in foul trouble. And you probably have to practice that. But I would not do it with my front line guys. 4.2 to go. They lob it inside, and it's picked off by George. He can heave it, and it'll count if it's good. And it's off the backboard and the rim. An entertaining first half ends with number nine Baylor up three on number 14 Kansas State. After a slow with nine, 20 to 10 points in the paint for Kansas State. But Baylor went six for 13 from beyond the arc. Both teams sharing the sugar in the first half. Nine assists on 12 made field goals for the Bears. 11 dimes on 13 made field goals for Kansas State. And it's going to be K-State ball to start the second half. Marquise Noel scoreless in the first half, and so is his fellow point guard, Adam Flagler. Both Baylor. a goose egg. Baylor shows zone, and I think they're in man-to-man, -man, but Thumba guarding Noel right now. Kind of interesting. Noel couldn't take advantage. Now he's got it again. Can he shoot over him? Gives it up. It's not down. Keontae Johnson had the first bucket of the game for the Cats. He's got the first bucket of the second half as well. So consistent. He can score in a variety of ways. He is a powerful young man. Remember, Rich, SEC preseason player of the year, the year he got the heart uh, issue. So there's no questioning in his talent. He should be a first-team All-Big 12 player this year. That one blocked. Now, Tomlin's got to give that ball up earlier. See, now he gives it back to the little man. Noel almost lost it. I say that affectionately. But, but Marquise was calling for the ball, and he's much quicker. Tomlin for three. Had one of those in the first half. And here comes Keontae George. Good pass. What a look up ahead to Jalen Bridges. And they're going to call the foul on Keontae Johnson. Great job of running by Bridges. He went right down. 70 right here and a good pass by Keontae George. We've watched this young man all year. Everybody knows about the scoring, but watch the vision right here. Right on the money. And in the NBA, and it's going to take a while, Rich, but he is going to be a point guard, a lead guard, let's just say a guard with the ball in his hands a lot. JB in and out on the first free throw. And this crowd and this student section at full throat. One for two for Bridges. 
there's Sills, lost the handle out of bounds, and that's a K-State turnover. Going back to that Keontae George near assist if Jalen Bridges converted that. You and I have said this numerous times earlier in the season. Not a game goes by where you don't draw, drop your jaw at yeah. one of the assists that Keontae George makes. He always does. He's always got a wow moment, especially for NBA scouts. Not like he's going to be Michael Jordan, but he certainly has a lot of ability. Seven times this season, Keontae George has had five or more assists in a game. But on that possession, Jalen Bridges turns it over. We have a one-point game. This is the rematch of a contest back in Waco where these two teams fought it out in regulation, and it was won by two by Kansas State on the road in overtime. Could we be headed for that same fate tonight? That's the second foul on Jalen Bridges, 11 and gray. When you talk to people at the University of Florida from former coach Mike White to the former teammates who he saw in late January when Florida came here as part of the SEC Big Ten 12 challenge. They rave about this young man. Uh, the story has been well told, but I think what surprised me, and I was here in October, Rich, he hasn't missed a beat. He didn't play for two years, and he's really one of the top, I'd say, 20 players in America. Yep. A wooden finalist, a Naismith finalist, yep. just like his teammate Marquise Noel. Matter of fact, these two teams are the only two teams that have multiple players on those lists. George is one of them, but he turns it over there. Got to play strong. Fast break opportunity. And Marquise Noel will go to the line to try to get his first points. And they're calling it an intentional foul. Yeah, you got to let him go on that. It's an easy call. It started at the other end where... Keontae George did not drive with physicality. And then on the other end, that foul clearly a flagrant one. Let's watch right here. And you can't wrap a guy up like that. You see Adam's going to try to hold up Marquise Noel. But let him go or play the ball hard. And a frustrating night for Adam Flagler. 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 3 on the night and Marquise Noel has his first point of the night interesting to note last time they played he was scoreless in the first half as well I'm just I'm watching both teams and they look like they've been practicing you know in, in heavy boots and weighted vests that's what the season in this conference has done to these teams so much energy expended See if those free throws get Noel off. Not that time. George wants it. He's got it. And gives it up. Flagler turns it over. Sloppy pass by Adam. Tried to one-hand it in there with no velocity. A rare off night so far for Adam Flagler, 10 and gray. Well, I said it. Baylor looks tired. Obviously in this game, but they're tired. Pocket pass. Circuits layup, no good from Tommy. Good extra pass. George for three. How about that? He will never, ever shy away from a big opportunity. Deontay George with three triples, matching LJ Cryer, who has three. Great ball movement, too. Sills loves to drive and left, missed that opportunity. Cryer, nice. stop and go. The window, LJ Cryer with the Baker's dozen. Oh man, you talk about sleight of hand right now. That's exactly what we saw. Noel. And the foul's gonna go on Flo Thamba. First of all, great ball movement here, but watch the effortless release of Keontae George. Ready to shoot it, catch and shoot, lets it go. And then LJ Cryer, who always scored 3,400 points in his high school career. Little magical footwork right there as he got to the rim. Cryer, sixth in Big 12 playing points per game. One upped by his teammate George, who's fourth in that category. And Keontae George having himself a good night. He's got 13. Beautiful step back. And again, a little bump into the defender drove Bridges back. 
Make that 15 for Johnson. And Kansas State trails Baylor by one. That's Only a foul. Play 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 whistle. Yeah. Sorry about that, Rich. That was an easy call. No. And now Marquise Noel will go to the bench and get a quick breather. He leads the league in minutes played, so he won't be long on the bench. No, he's got Jerome a TV Town. timeout coming. Yeah. Yep. Coming up on four minutes gone by. Bridges, three. Too strong. Here comes Sills up the right side. Johnson way off the mark. That was altered. Wildcats just one loss at home this season. Five to shoot. Johnson does and knocks it down. That's a pro move. You know, Saturday we compared him to a guy named Mitch Richmond. Mm. Not quite that good. Mitch is obviously a Naismith Hall of Famer, but very similar style in his two years that he played here in 87 and 88. And Johnson's been at his best against the best. Texas, Kansas, Baylor. Those are his highest scoring games of the season. Tonight he's got a game high 17 so far. And we have our first media timeout. The Cats claw their way back on top. A one-point lead over ninth-ranked Baylor. Like about him, numerous times this year, Rich, he's taken a big shot for Baylor, and he does not shy away from it. Not sure if he's a lottery pick like some of those pictures you saw, but he's got full potential for sure. I think he, he will be a lottery pick. I do. I think he is, but what do I, you know, what do I know? You know a little. No, I think he is. And he's not a big guard. They want him bigger at 6'5", 6'6", but he's got a lot of skill. Kansas State up three. Flagler's three doesn't tie it. Does LJ Criers? Yes, it does. And John Shamwa Chachua with the tip out. And the opportunity for the three. Good hustle. Just checked into the game. LJ Cryer has four 20-point games in his last eight contests. He's trending toward that again. 16 for Cryer. Noel, step back. Baseline. Got it. Nicely First done. field goal of the game for yeah. Marquise Noel. That's enforced a lot. It's not like he's looking to score, taking tough shots. Flagler. Again, off the mark. Up ahead, Johnson. Look out below. Love threw it away. Over and back. Baylor turnover. Well, we talked about the fast break that got this Wildcats team started early. And right back at it in the second half, Keontae Johnson gets ahead of the defense. And Rich, you know, we know this league probably as well as anybody. This Baylor team right now is playing tired. And that's okay. It is a long month of basketball left. They just look like they don't have energy. Remember, they played Saturday in Lawrence, stayed here in Kansas, and I don't see the zip. Baylor looking for their 10th win in league play. Noel. Good save by Gasson. Noel could shoot it from there. He chooses not to this time. Instead, he drives left, gives it up, and Carter pulls it up. Excellent. Breaking down the bear defense. 
defense. Scott Drew will take a timeout as this ball comes over half court. You can't hear yourself think inside the Legion of Doom. What Jerome Tang has done in one year is absolutely remarkable. Six wins against AP Top 25 teams. One more win, and that would come tonight, would tie a franchise school record. Remember, ba Baylor got off to the slow start early and then hit a barrage of threes. And with five on the shot clock, a bailout foul. And Marquise no Noel no, sticking his hand in the cookie jar. Well, we've reached the 12 minute mark. Carolina first at six Eastern, followed by Duke and Virginia Tech from Cameron Indoor. And finally, number 15, St. Mary's, taking on number 12, Gonzaga, for the WCC regular season title. Then the West Coast Conference goes out to Las Vegas for their postseason tournament. And the following week, it's Kansas City, here we come for the Big 12 tournament. And if that tournament started tonight, this is what the bracket would look like. Insane. Brandon, your thoughts? Well, it's, it's insane because the, the teams that play on opening night, three of them at least, are playing for NCAA bids, West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma State. And the winners of those first round games will be a major nuisance to the, the one and two seeds. Off the miss. Scramble for the loose ball. Wildcats come away with it. They've got themselves a five-point lead. They've led by as many as ten tonight. Looking to sweep the Baylor Bears in the regular season. They won the first one in Waco in overtime. They're daring Tomlin to shoot that three. Carter off the mark. Loose ball, chased down by Jonathan Chamwachachua. Remember, Baylor got loose late first half with a bunch of threes. Good switch. Here's Love. With eight on the shot clock. And that foul's gonna go on Marquise Noel, his third. You're getting back to the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. I said this last night, Rich. Kansas is 33 and 5 since last March 1st. There's just not a better coach in America than Bill Self. And we don't always highlight him because they're so good so often for so long. It's, to me, I know coaching. I just, they used to say about Bear Bryant, he can take yours and beat his, and take his and beat yours. And. What Bill Self is doing this year, losing 74% of their points, it's, you know, it's taken for granted. I think by all of us, including yeah. people who are supposed to be experts. Off a national championship team. Just amazing. And this league has great coaches. Five on the shot clock. And a jump ball. It'll be possession hour to Baylor. And you look at what Kansas has done this year. Look at the quad one wins. And Baylor right behind him, Texas as well. You know, I was thinking about this today. We've got five coaches in the Big 12 that have been to a Final Four. We have more that have been National Coach of the Year. You think of Jamie Dixon, some of the others. Jalen Bridges traveled with him. Bill, Bill Scott Drew said to Keith Kimball, did he get pushed? And they're debating it right now. I think Keith's going to win the argument. Scott, winner of back to back to back Big 12 Coach well, of the Year. Awards. I mean, we don't have time to go down the list, but a lot of these guys, Porter Moser, Jamie Dixon, Bill Self, Scott Drew, Bob Huggins, these guys have been national coaches of the year. That's a big reason why this league's so good. Off the feed from Noel, David Gasson, a chance at a three point play. Great pick and roll action right here. And Noel, I think he threw this ball with his left hand. The little guy from Harlem, New York. Take a look. Watch this pass. Feels the defense on him. Two, two on him. And Gasson heads to the rim. This is a young man that did not have a scholarship offer 
until late in his high school career, ended up at Arkansas, Little Rock, and brought here by Shane Southwell, who played here, played at Rice High School in New York, convinced him that the Little Apple would be as good for him as the Big Apple. And Fran, he is not just a scorer. He has eight assists tonight and no turnovers. He's not forcing anything. People get caught up in, well, he's not scoring. No, he's running the team. And the Cats defense suffocating in the second half. And that's going to be a foul on Gasson. Yeah, Gasson put two hands on the driver. And I'll tell you what, Fran, you talk about the chess match between these two who know each other so well. Scott Drew is clearly trying to shield all the things he's saying to his team and all the signals that he's making to his team so the Wildcats and Jerome Tang don't see it. Here's Sills. And that foul is going to be on L.J. Cryer. And that's not a bad foul. It's only L.J.'s first. And what he did was stop a fast break right there because Sills is a locom locomotive when he got that ball in the open court. Uh, you know, Desi Sills did not show up on Campus Rich until October 21st because he was graduating from Arkansas State. Two-time state champion, Elite Eight with Arkansas, First winning season in a while last year back in his hometown in Jonesboro. And a great addition to Jerome Tank's, Tank's punch. Veteran presence playing in his 154th game tonight. And he's the first on the floor for the loose ball. It's going to be Kansas State basketball. Good hustle by Desi Sills. And now Thamba comes in. Jonathan Chamuchachua goes to the bench. Five on the shot clock for the Cats. They lob it inside. Tap it right back to Johnson. High arcing shot. No good. It's Masood. Johnny on the spot. Hustle plays. We said it. 50-50 balls. I don't think Baylor has... The energy they usually bring to the table tonight. That man with the ball, Adam Flagler. Scoreless. 0 for 9 from the field. Who can they get a lift from? Tough shot. Not George, not that time. And it's K-State ball. And Scott Drew is apoplectic for well, someone who rarely loses his school. They're taking tough shots. And they're a good isolation team, one-on-one. -on -one. They can do that, but they're driving into bodies. The defense is really good. And listen, Baylor goes home to, for Texas on Saturday. This league, it's Peacock today, Feather Duster tomorrow. It really is. You can't get too high or too low in late February. Yeah. It's almost impossible to say who's the hottest team right now. It's the question is right now. Who's got a one-game winning streak? Oklahoma State has won five straight. Now they've lost three straight. Feather duster tomorrow. And Flagler. Interesting. Let's see if they overrule. Well, the ball went out of bounds. It was a wild pass to Caleb Lohner, but the officials are saying it's going to stay Baylor ball. And Jerome Tank can't believe it. Well, Brett Smith did not need any help from James Breeding, so we play on. Yeah. Stolen away. Carter. Big throw down at the other end. Largest lead of the game for the Cats. Exchanging pleasantries, but Scott has been frustrated most of this night. Well, it's not it's not about officiating. It's the team has not played with energy. Rich, on Saturday at halftime, they had won nine of their last ten. One of the hottest teams in the country. Now, they look dead as a doorknob. K-State lost four out of five. They look like roadkill out here on, you know, Kansas 177. 
it changes game to game in this league. Five to shoot. Flagler, tough shot, and he got fouled for his efforts. That's going to go on Gasson, his second. K-State defense has been outstanding, minus that flurry of threes at the end of the first half. 44 points for Baylor is not indicative of the team they are most of the time. So Adam Flagler will step to the line looking for his first points of the night. This is a young man who is fourth in the conference in scoring in Big 12 play. And playing point guard for the first time in his career. And he only has one assist tonight. Undefeated number one, South Carolina taking on 29 Tennessee in our Thursday night women's matchup on ESPN in the app. Gamecocks have won a program record 33 straight games. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Dawn Staley making her mark as the preeminent coach in the women's game. Outstanding. Great player. Philly girl. Just an amazing career. University of Virginia is a star. U.S. Olympian. Now, maybe the best coach on the women's side and certainly one of the best coaches in all of basketball. Feels like it's been all K-State, but Baylor trails by just nine. Five on the shot clock. Going to drive left. Got to know that. See, that's part of the scouting report. Low clock, players desperate. He goes to his strength. And Desi, listen, it's hard to guard him when he goes left. But you know, you got to know it, and you got to have that in your brain as part of that scouting report. 7.25 to go. Both teams in the bonus, one and one on every subsequent foul. This young man, Rich, we mentioned that he showed up late because he was graduating. He was doing Zoom calls for his workouts and skull sessions to learn the offenses and defenses before he arrived in Manhattan. And he is an Iron Man. Played in all 98 games from 2018 to 2021. Well, that one year, his sophomore year, he played with a very badly damaged shoulder. Well, he was a starter most of the year until the injury. Sills his free throws, extend the lead to 11. But Flagler, maybe those free throws are going to get him unhinged a little bit. Well, they're going to need to get some stops on this end defensively. First field goal tonight for Adam Flagler. There's another dime from Noel to Johnson. Great left-handed pass off the dribble. A one-handed pass where you said not allow players to throw it. But it comes off his hand so quickly, hard for the defense to react. Nine assists for Marquise Noel. Let's watch this pass, Rich. It comes right off the bounce. And watch him. He sees the cutter. Boom. Great cut by Keontae Johnson. What a tandem they have been. And they've only been together a few short months. 21 points for Johnson. Nine assists for Noel. And the float game to boot. He's the first ever Wildcat with 200 or more assists in a season. Ten to shoot for the Bears. Love out to George. Got the three ball. That time they explored the paint. They looked for a good one and Love with a nice kick out. Keontae George four for seven from beyond the arc tonight. Now right now it's about Baylor's defense. They need some stops. And I love the judicious way K-State is moving the basketball. What do you want to see more of from the Baylor D? Turn the heat up, make make passes tougher, keep them from driving, contest shots, rebound, and run. Rich, we said it at the beginning of the game. This is not vintage Baylor defense. Analytically, you look at the Ken Palm numbers, it's the worst defense since 2008-2009. Why is that? They don't have length at the rim. They don't, they don't block shots. 
their guard play, you know, you're talking about losing guys like Davion Mitchell and Macy Oteague. Offensively, they're terrific. They're not as difficult for teams to score on uh, as those other Baylor teams was, including the national championship team. And they can't be a good zone team because they don't have the length they used to have. A bucket here, and it's back to a single-digit deficit, though, for Baylor. Here's Flagler. Still can't find the range. Offensive rebound, Langston Love. And a foul on K-State. Good news for Baylor now is Bears will shoot free throws with the clock stopped. But they're not a full-court pressing team normally. That's the third foul on the big man, Naquan Tomlin. And it'll be a one-and-one -one situation for Langston Love, a 73% free throw shooter on the season. Absolutely love the energy of these Wildcats. So anxious to see how these teams do when they get to the NCAA tournament and the shackles are off from playing in this league. And he front rims the front end of a one and one. You know, we talked about Noel not scoring. He is basically the conductor of this orchestra. It doesn't matter that he's got six points. He also a veteran presence on this Wildcats team. 123rd game played for Noel. Left hand, easy. Easy two yep. for Desi Sill. Downhill drive, left hand. Scouting report D. Flagler can't answer. Carter's got it. And Noel knows. Slow it down. We're going to milk this baby because we got everything in our favor right now. Ultimate quarterback. And Keontae George fouls Marquise Noel, who will go to the line, the best free throw shooter in Big 12. Well, last night we watched Juan Harris from Kansas. Tonight it's Noel. What a treat. The hardest thing, Rich, as a coach, when you don't have a point guard, you, you don't look well coached. I, I coached a couple teams like that. But when you have a great point guard, you just look like your team knows what they're doing. And not always the coach's strength. And Scott Drew has not had any shortages of terrific point guards yeah. in his coaching career. No doubt. And Adam Flagler is a terrific point guard, just having a tough night tonight. He is. And the guy at the foul line has been just a magical player for this team. Hey, Nigel Pack left for Miami. Good for him. They're playing great. Who knows if Keontae Johnson shows up on campus if there wasn't room for him to go into this backcourt with Noel. He had 32 points and 14 assists in their win in Waco. He's not scoring tonight, but he has nine assists against the Bears this evening. Coming up on four minutes to go. Time is of the essence for the Baylor Bears. And it's out of bounds with nine on the shot clock. Flagler, wide open crier. And he doesn't miss many of those. And right now, if you're K-State, just manage the clock. TV timeout coming. You catch your breath. You've got this game under control. It's a well-oiled machine right now. And by the way, they had lost four out here five until Saturday when they beat Iowa State at home. Carter off the mark. Rebound to Chamuachachua. Kansas State's only loss inside Bramlage came at the hands of the Texas Longhorns. There's a three by George and a timeout on the floor. Keontae George with his fifth triple of the night. He has 17. LJ Fryer has 16. But number nine Baylor still. Well, the Big 12 is coming up in just a little while. We still have 324 to go from Bramlage Coliseum on the campus of Kansas State University. Fran Fraschilla, Rich Hollenberg, and it has been a Kansas State kind of a night. They're shooting 65% inside the arc tonight. A lot of points in the paint. The more aggressive team. In this league, you have to play with desperation. 
in the paint again. Keontae Johnson leads all scorers. He has 23. And the one concern, uh, that Baylor's going to get home and take a couple days off, get ready for Texas. My one concern for them is defensively right now, they are the worst defensive team in the Big 12 in conference play. And they have to do something about that. And I don't know what they can do. That foul's going to go on Keontae Johnson. And another Keontae, Keontae George, will go to the line and shoot two. This time of year, Rich, it's so mental. I, I almost guarantee you that when Kansas got back last night from Fort Worth, Bill Self loves Big Mondays, not only because he wins a lot, but because they usually use Tuesday and Wednesday to rest. And they'll come back Thursday and do a little bit, be ready for Friday and play. And these teams going into March, it's mental and physical. One for two for George. He has 18. It's a 12-point Kansas State lead. They've led by as many as 14 tonight. Skip pass, but it's picked off by Cryer. Still a puncher's chance for a good three-point shooting team like Baylor. Here's George, catch and release. Rebound, Bridges. Oh, I would have loved to have seen him just go up and shoot it. Yeah, instead he hits yep. the tough two. Another 20-point effort for Keontae George's 12th this season. Smart traps right here. Johnson goes right at Chamochachua, who rejects it. Got to play fast now if you're Baylor. And shoot the three if it's there. 145 to go. George foregoes the three for the two, and Chamachachua follows. Now again, you set the press up. You don't have to foul. Get some good traps. Force some helium passes. I would play one more possession of straight-up defense. Now Flagler on Noel. Little trap coming. Noel gets in the paint, gives it up. That's assist number 10 for Marquise Noel. There's an example of what we talked about. There's no rim protection for this defense. John Mochachua fouled by Marquise Noel, his fourth. Save the basket. He's going to make every day John earn two. Amazing what Keontae Johnson has done this year against the best competition. He had 24 the first time these teams played, 25 tonight. He put up 22 at Kansas in his first trip ever to Allen Fieldhouse. What a sensational addition to this Wildcats program. He had a game in November or December, 29 and 11 against Nevada. And that's when you first saw what he could do. Now, let's look ahead. Baylor's got Texas at home Saturday. You'll see a different Baylor team. And K-State has to go to Oklahoma State, who after winning five in a row has lost two in a row and playing for their tournament resume. Well, tonight was a revenge game. They lost to Kansas State earlier in the season. It looks like they're going to do the same tonight, but they have Texas, who they lost to, and Iowa State, who they lost to early in the season, to these Baylor Bears to try to at least split the regular season series with those teams. And I saw a year, but what I've seen from Baylor tonight is a tired team that did not play well defensively. And by the way, what K-State is doing in this building and in college basketball is remarkable. Going to pull it out. Now I think you got a foul. And you're fouling a guy who is essentially automatic. That one's going to go on Langston Love and send Marquise Noel back to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. This young guy in the final five minutes of games this year is well over 90%. Yep. 89% on the season. And you could start talking now with only a few games left about who's the Big 12 player of the year. Jalen Wilson, obviously, may be the first name that comes to mind, but how can you argue with Marquise Noel in well, Big 12 play? Leads the conference in scoring, assists, steals, free throw percentage, 
three-point percentage and minutes played. I, I don't know which way I'd go right now. I'll give it a couple more games, but I know this. There have been times where a guy like Jalen Wilson was first-team All-American and didn't win player of the year in a league like the Big 12. Amazing. But I think Jalen Wilson, to me, front runner, right there is Marquise Noel. And I'll tell you, Keontae Johnson's not far behind. And Flagler is there with them. John Wachachua, another follow. Time is of the essence now. George goes for the steal, gets the foul instead. And you have to foul him because the clock will run. And despite the fact that he didn't put up his usual 20 a game, Marquise Noel has another double-double. 10 points, 10 assists, his sixth double-double this season. Yeah, it's one, of the, it's one of those things, Rich. You know, there's games where Pat Mahomes goes... 14 for 22 200 yards the team rushes for 200 yards and you go He had a great game You know Marquise hasn't had to score tonight. He just has been the conductor of this great orchestra Scoreless in the first half 11 in the second half And he's seven for seven from the free throw he's, line. He's as good a free throw shooter as you'll see yep. He's talked about it his entire career. Heart over height, and no one has a bigger heart than Marquise Noel. There's a lot of people in New York City that remember this kid at Bishop Lachlan on the Rucker Park playgrounds. His dad used to take him to every park he could to get him competition. Always the littlest guy out there. Flagler, no. Kansas State, the rebound. And now they'll play keep away. And John Wachachua fouls Noel again. Scott Drew said no fouls, too late. How about this crowd? Let's, let's listen, Rich. Well, we're talking about Marquise Noel not scoring a lot tonight. They keep sending him to the free throw line. He's going to end up with 20 points. He is money and nails when it counts the most. And I think if you ask Jerome Tang after the game, what stands out to you the most about his performance? No turnovers for he's Marquise a, he's, a, he's a quarterback. Yeah, that's what he is. He's a quarterback. Every team needs a great point guard in case state has got him. 10 for 10 from the free throw line for Marquise Noel. And a bank shot three by Keontae George. 23 for George. But it's academic. Kansas State will sweep the Baylor Bears for the first time in three years. They'll improve to 15-1 and one at home and their 21st win on the season. And two close friends exchange hugs. Jerome Tang and Scott Drew. But tonight... It was Kansas State's night. Your final score once again, K-State by 10 over Baylor, 75.